All right, so I'm going to talk about how to use YouTube advertising to sell um, any products or services you have for your business. And um, I want to make sure that you know how to do this for yourself um, because I want to make sure that you have a strategy in which you can reliably go out there and get customers that are right for your business and do it cost effectively as well. So yes, we are going to be advertising and spending money doing that, but it's all about profit. It's all about getting return on investment. So $1 in and getting more than one dollar back and that's really the name of the game when it comes to advertising so um, just so you have a bit of a heads up about me because I tend to be behind the scenes most of the time and don't do too much um, presenting or public facing sort of stuff um, I run an agency, a, fa uh, a YouTube advertising agency called uh, Viewability and um, the stuff I'm going to be sharing with you is stuff from campaigns I've been running for the likes of people like Amy Porterfield, Frank Kern, uh, Neil Patel, Brendan Bouchard, Andy Harrington um, and many more in fact this is an older slide um, so there's lots of brands that we work with as well um, and like corporate brands and um, yeah so we, we do a lot of work with a lot of different people helping them build out their advertising on these different platforms and in most cases we get a very very high ROI um, so normally it's the sort of a process where we put one dollar in and get three dollars back and really can scale up um, for some of our campaigns with clients we're up to a hundred thousand dollars per month on spend um, and um, so obviously we're spending a lot of money doing this but it's all based on the fact that it's making a profit and it's feeding the funnels it's getting customers it's getting um, getting people to buy um, at a profit and that's what it's all about at the end of the day but in order to really kind of master YouTube you've got to start with the user in mind um, so whilst you might think oh you need to have this fantastic um, video and all this sort of stuff that helps of course it does but to get the best results you really need to start with the user and really think about right when we begin our promotion let's not think about our business let's not think about what we're going to say and how we're going to promote it just yet just start with your customer online what are they, what are they up to what are they doing and is it right for me to have this conversation with them and can I uh, get in front of them at the right time and I want to give you um, a bit of context because millions of people visit YouTube every single day um, and I think it's something like 5 billion views every single day on YouTube, it's just crazy. Um, but um, this is the four reasons why people go to YouTube. They either, on the left hand side there, want to watch what they're into, so they might be really passionate about something. I know for example I'm really into um, watching videos from Seth Godin, um, who's um, a marketer, Gary Vaynerchuk for example as well. I will go to YouTube and type in their names looking for them uh, because I want to watch their videos. And likewise, there's other things I'm really into. Um, so like hockey, for example, I like seeing what's happening in the hockey, football as well. I go to YouTube to look for things that feed my passions. And that's more than half. There's just 53% of people online uh, watching video will tend to go and watch video for that reason. But the other half, the 47% well, of people, are going to YouTube to watch videos based on looking for information to help them. They want to know something, do something, or buy something. And that's our audience. Um, I mean, all four we can get in front of. And I could kind of talk to you about different strategies and how to get in front of these audiences. But the ones that are really easy to get in front of and very cost effective are the people that are already going to YouTube, already motivated, because they want to know something, do something, or buy something. Because they're doing their research. I mean, think about it. We all do this. We all go through a certain moment in time where we want something or we... Um, we need something and we go to Google and we go to YouTube looking for information and that really is the perfect time as a business to get in front of those types of customers so have a think about that have a think about your audience or your customers and when they go to YouTube what would they tend to be typing in that, where you could also play in that market where can you advertise to these people based on the fact that you know they're pretty much looking for you already and I'll give you a bit of context behind this because um, just well, it was actually last year, so 2016, I ran the London Marathon. Um, but before that, I um, didn't really think about running the marathon at all. It wasn't one of my passions or anything like that. But um, one of my friends, um, unfortunately, had to pull out of doing the marathon. And it raised quite a bit of money for charity already. And um, he didn't want to just pull out and then not have um, can anyone fulfill his place. So we had like a WhatsApp group with all of our friends. And um, when that WhatsApp group came about someone said hey look who's going to run the marathon instead of this person and it ended up being me putting my hand up in that whatsapp group saying all right i'll do it i'll run the marathon 
and I confirmed it. Um, the papers were sent off pretty much immediately because uh, they were all ready to sign, basically. Um, and um, as soon as that happened, from the WhatsApp group, I went straight to Google and typed in how to run a marathon. <laughs> that was the first thing I typed in. And the information I got from Google was that I needed at least 25 weeks, I think it was, um, in order to kind of like train to run the marathon. And I had something like 16 weeks left. So I was already massively behind and didn't know how to run a marathon. And I was frantically going to Google and YouTube, um, looking for information about how to run a marathon, looking for things like shoes, equipment, how to train, um, nutrition, um, all the information you would need, um, even things like physios and hotels and things. Like this one moment in time where I said, yes, I'll run the marathon, turned into this whole moment where I had online looking for all this information that I could potentially find on how to run a marathon. I was going frantic. I was like looking, trying to find out any information I could to help me um, can train within 16 weeks to run the marathon. And that was my moment in time. Um, but your customers will be going through similar things every single day. So when it comes to your customers going through their moments in time, where can you play? Where can you advertise? Because if you're someone like Nike selling uh, shoes, uh, marathon running shoes, for example, and you got an advert in front of me at that time, it would have been perfect. I would have definitely bought those shoes because I needed a pair of shoes. I didn't know which ones to buy. As long as they gave me some good reasons for buying their shoes, the chance of me buying are very likely. So um, you need to make sure that you can define your customer moments. What are the moments when your customers go to Google or go to YouTube, start that looking for information because they want to know something, do something, or buy something? And when can you get in front of those people? Now, so think about the moment they started their journey to buying something from you. So if you think about your perfect customer, um, whether you are very new and you don't have any customers just yet, that's cool. Um, think about what sort of customer might be perfect for you. Um, and then almost play it backwards. Play back the story in your mind of like how they would come about um, buying from you. How, how did that happen? And like kind of almost zoom it backwards all the way into the point where was there an external trigger, like me saying, yes, all right, I'll do the London Marathon because my friend had pulled out, and that was my reason for starting this journey to becoming a marathon um, prospect, so to speak, for lots of different companies, or was there like a, a, a natural interest they had already? Was Was I already looking up marathon videos on YouTube because it was one of my passions? I wasn't, but there were, pl there were probably plenty of people that were doing that. But likewise, because I really like Seth Godin and Gary Vaynerchuk, if people showed me ads in front of those videos, the chance of me being interested in that content uh, because it's entrepreneurial based are very likely that I'm going to watch what that video has to say. So people get into intersect that moment for me when I'm watching videos about anything. But as long as they know that they're watching, I'm watching something that's one of my passions, they can advertise to me as well. So what I'd recommend for you, just for this kind of like um, this presentation here whilst we're on Facebook um, doing this live for the first time ever, <laughs> um, can you choose, please, for yourself um, a know or do moment of one of your customers? Think about what your customers will be looking up, searching for, um, so they know what to do or how to do something. Maybe it's a bit of software that you can help them with. Maybe it's um, questions that they have. Maybe it's where they want to be able to do something in particular. And that's where you could become very useful for them. Can you just choose one of those? Like, so almost like choose your customer and also choose that do, know or do moment. That's really important you do that. Just write something down whilst you're listening to this. Write it down just kind of like, it doesn't have to be right or wrong. It just gives you a, a point to start from. And once you've done that, just, just to, so you know, these moments last for 40 minutes. These are kind of like statistics that come from Google. Um, they measure how people use um, the internet, and they're seeing that on mobile, people are starting these sessions on mobile, and they last on average for 40 minutes. So if someone's starting to look something up, you've got like a 40-minute window where if you get in front of them at that point, it's the perfect time to get in front of them. So if you could be there in front of them in this 40-minute window, what would you say? What would you say to that particular prospect? And that's where we want to start. So we're starting with the user in mind. And remember, they are in their want to know, want to do moment. That's the one we've identified to begin with. So you want to give them advice. You don't want to be a salesperson. You don't want to be that sleazy salesperson or be that kind of like TV ad, kind of just about brand awareness. Instead, what you want to do is get in front of that customer and actually help them, actually give them good, solid advice. So here's the script structure I would recommend for you to create a video that's going to really get in front of this audience with really valuable information. 
The first thing is to do is at the start of your video, when you create your video, the first part of it is the hook. So by that I might mean you want to kind of really grab their attention to begin with and make sure they're listening in. So you really got to just sell the content of what you're about to share with them. So say for example you had a, a, a tip or a strategy or something you're going to share with them to really help them in their moment in time. The hook would be something like, in this video I'm going to share with you three steps to show you exactly how to get more customers. Or in this video I'm going to show you how to fix your car in three easy steps, depending on what your customers are looking for. So the hook is pretty simple sometimes, it's just kind of selling the um, the video and kind of opening that loop so they're kind of like, okay, that sounds like something I want to be listening into. Remember that first five seconds is really important and I'll come back to why that's the case in just a second. The next thing you need to do is build your credibility. Now don't do this over the top, don't brag, um, especially in the UK, we don't tend to like bragging too much. Um, but what you want to do is just kind of give a reason for why you need to, to like show your credibility. At the start of this presentation I showed you some of the clients we're working with um, because it means that you now know the stuff I'm about to share with you actually works. It's not me saying hey this could work really well. This, this stuff I'm sharing with you is the stuff that I do with all my agency clients every single day. Now when it comes to your credibility and building it into a video I'd often say any clips you've got of speaking from stage that's the time to use it. If you're an author great do that add that in. If you've won any awards talk about that maybe how long you've been in business. Um, anything you can do how long you've been in the industry even anything you can do to just kind of like put that marker down so that in the in the viewer's mind they can like tick that box of okay it's worth listening to what you have to say. It's just that first couple of seconds um, like you're just going to go for your hook first, maybe last three to five seconds, your credibility, maybe another five to six seconds or so. It's, it can be really done very effectively, very quickly. And then you're going to build that in with a soft call to action. So something that I've done quite a bit is um, I've said in the credibility section, I said, hey, look, the stuff I'm about to share with you in this video, after doing my hook, the stuff I'm about to share with you in this video is from a live presentation I gave to 600 people live in London. Now, that's good credibility because it's 600 people, and there's a video clip of me doing that. And in the soft call to action, I'd say, um, I'll move into a point where I say, and if you want to go and grab that full presentation, it lasts about 75 minutes. Um, there's, we cover loads of different other material in that presentation as well. Um, then just simply click the button in the video, and you can go and grab that presentation. However, let's go into the content here in this video. So you kind of do the soft call to action. You're not going to push it. You're just going to say, hey, look, this is useful for you. You can go and grab it if you want. That's going to be useful for you. Then what you want to do is break down this content into um, a system and try and include a story as well if you can and try and do the two together. So a system might be like a three step system, it might be a five step system. Try and keep it three because it's quicker and um, people don't have that much time on YouTube. Um, but um, if you have like a system where it might be three steps, three strategies, uh, it could be just be one strategy if you wish to share that, um, just make sure it's really, really useful. So even if someone left the video without going any further or engaging with your business in any other way, then still make sure that you've left them with a really good experience. But try and build it into a case study as well, like a story. Try and talk about um, how you helped somebody in particular or what you did in particular that really benefited somebody um, or just kind of give an example of how it works in the real world try and give that context to the viewer so they can really understand it and they get fully engaged with the, with the whole process then you want to make sure that you, and this kind of goes throughout the whole of the video but here especially like this bridge section is you want to do what's in it for you um, so I always say like so you can it's always a good phrase to use because it really gets you to view um, your content in the eyes of the viewer and make sure you're selling the benefits to them as well. So what's in it for you? Should you use this system that you just shared with them? What's that going to be useful for them? Why is that going to be useful for them? So you can is always a good way of adding that into the script so it makes you customer focused. And then the final part of the video is to use a call to action and this point is similar to the soft call to action but this time it's a little bit more direct so you're going to say Okay, so here's what I've got for you if you want to continue this relationship. Do this, do that, I've got this great free offer or I've got this great, great book or whatever it is you've got for them. Um, build in a tiny bit of um, promotion behind that as well. doesn't need too much at this point because uh, you're going to do most of that on the next page, but enough for them to get to click. So you might say, um, I want to create um, a really useful video or a PDF or a webinar or whatever it might be. And then I'd often say future, pre future paste that call to action. So don't just say click here to find out more. You want to say click here, go to the web um, website, fill in your name and email, and you'll have instant access to the thing. Or we're going to send it straight to your email inbox. 
So basically, you're you're painting the picture and making it a lot more vivid for the viewer because um, it shows that when we test it, it shows that um, the more future pacing you do in the call to action, the better result you'll get. Um, and um, and that is a script structure that we've used a lot with clients and it kind of covers everything you need to go for a YouTube ad because you're going to be providing useful, valuable content for people on YouTube. So once you've got the video done and in terms of um, just so you've got a kind of a bit of an idea of like um, how to put this all together, once you've scripted it and you feel really comfortable with it, go and really practice it and then I would say go and film it with a professional videographer or in the studio and get an, get an editor to do it for you as well. I mean, you're going to be spending money on this on a, on YouTube. You want to make it perfect, and you want to have it something that you can really nail um, for content and everything else you do as well. So um, quality is really important, and I would say that gone are the days where, um, for, for promotional ads like this, gone are the days where you can get away with just a uh, kind of a, an average-looking video. It needs to be really high quality. Um, so... Um, yeah, in terms of production, I would say don't try and learn it yourself. Just go and get someone else to do it for you. You'll get a much better result, um, and you'll look a lot better. Um, editors um, don't cost huge amounts, um, but are worth their weight in gold. Um, if they can edit your video to look really good, it's very, very valuable for you and your business. So once you've created the video, and you've uploaded it to YouTube, and you've got it on your YouTube channel, how do we get it in front of your customers? Well, that's the next step, right? So... You're going to be getting in front of these people that are in there wanting to do or wanting to learn kind of like mindset. And so they're doing kind of their research and they're, they're doing their reviews. They're motivated. They're already motivated. You don't have to motivate them any further. They're already searching. But what are you going to say to them? Oh, sorry, not what are you going to say to them. How are you going to get in front of exactly that traffic? Well, think about your customer moment for a second and try and turn it into a keyword. So if someone's typing in they want to learn something or they want to do something, what are the words they would choose to type into YouTube or Google? doesn't matter which one. Um, so in this instance, we're going to take a kind of a case study of Andy Harrington, um, who's a presenter or public speaker in the UK. And his customers are likely to type in something like how to give a presentation, maybe something like how to give an effective presentation, how to give a presentation at work. It's key words or key phrases that, that, it, that are kind of like what we all call a moment and we want to target that particular person. Then you're going to have like people that run their own businesses, people that are in um, kind of people that give presentations at work, for example. Um, so how to give a presentation tends to be a good keyword to get in front of that type of audience. Now, if you were to go to YouTube and type in how to give a presentation um, into the search bar here, and these, this is what it would look like. Here's the search results. We're all familiar with this. And look, there's 14.9 million results there. So there's quite a few videos about how to give a presentation. But let's look at this third one down. Um, you can see here communication skills, the six keys of powerful communication. If we were to click a video like that, which very often we would do, it would open up into what's called the watch page, and it would look like this. Now, in the vast majority of cases, what tends to happen is that instead of getting to see the video to begin with, what ends up happening, in fact, is this. You get a pre-roll ad, um, or what's actually called an in-stream ad, that would run before the video you're about to watch. Now, this in-stream ad or pre-ride is what I would recommend you do as well. They work incredibly well, and I'm going to show you a strategy of how to implement this. Um, but if you can get your video like this working here, then you're familiar with you've got this kind of like skip ad button on the right-hand side, um, and someone can skip the ad after the first five seconds. And, um, of course, that's why that first five seconds, that hook, is so important in the video. But then they've got a link on the left-hand side they can click to go back to the website. Um, and the great thing about these ads um, is you can send the traffic directly back to your website, like Andy does here. Um, but the great thing is is that you only pay when someone watches past 30 seconds or if someone decides to click um, one of the links to go back to your website. There's still ways of getting that to be free um, if you really want it to be. Um, but at the end of the day, you're only paying for a person that's actually engaging with your video, either watching lots of your video or um, deciding to um, kind of come back to your website. So you know you're only paying for the traffic that is likely to convert, which is just amazing. Um, so that's exactly um, what we like to see in terms of the advertising from these types of ads. And that's why it's so cost effective to run these types of advertising. So this is the in-stream placement strategy, and this is about getting in front of um, your customers at exactly the right time, and uh, this is what I would recommend you get into to begin with. Now, when you create 
um, your YouTube video and you've got it in your YouTube channel, then um, you are also going to want to create an AdWords account. Um, an AdWords account, you can search it, it's Google AdWords, and it's how you advertise your videos online um, and on YouTube. But as you're building a campaign out, um, and it's pretty self-explanatory um, AdWords, it looks complicated, but it's really not if you just spend a couple of hours in there just clicking around and getting used to it. Um, you'll build a campaign and you'll have options to choose your targeting. And placement targeting is a really effective way of getting in front of your customers. So what you can do inside the actual AdWords platform, you can type in the keyword that you've identified as something that's useful for you. In this case, we've typed in how to give a presentation. We've cl clicked on YouTube videos, and it really just gives us a list of all the YouTube videos down here that are relevant to that particular keyword that you've typed in of how to give a presentation. And basically what you're going to do is say, right, any of those videos that are useful, you click that little gray arrow on the right-hand side, that chevron, you can click that and it'll add it to your list of videos that you want to advertise in front of. So you're really pinpointing exactly the videos you want to get in front of. And it means that you can say, right, if someone's looking up another video about how to do a presentation, your ad about how to give a presentation will run in front of it. And that is the easiest way of exactly targeting your audience because your audience are going to YouTube, they're just about to watch a video about how to give a killer presentation, for example, and your ad plays before. Now, if your ad is good, then people will watch it and want to take the next step with you rather than watching the YouTube video they were about to watch. And as a result, that's such an effective strategy to use on YouTube. Now, just to give you a bit of context here in terms of results, you can see the cost per conversion there ranges um, in these different campaigns um, from around about £6.16, I think the top one is there, and the cheapest is uh, 31p per conversion. Um, and the cost per lead ranges quite heavily. But the great thing about that is any point at which you think, right, something that's not working there, £6.16 versus 31 pence, there's quite a big difference there, you can turn off the campaign where you're paying £6.16. So you just turn that one off and you turn up the kind of like the advertising where you're paying 31p because you say, right, okay, well, maybe you're happy to pay £5 per lead, for example. Um, and as a result, you just kind of like say, right, if you're getting them in for 31p, let's really spend as much money as we can there because we're making huge profits from that. And Andy Harrington here gives us a great testimonial here of giving a 400% ROI, but um, I know that will uh, come across strange on the um, player, so I'll, um, I'll just move on. Great, so here's the exercise I'd recommend you do uh, to get this right and working for your business if you want to start using YouTube ads, is to identify your best customer to begin with, the exact type of customer you want to get, then write down their trigger moment, that moment at which they started looking for information um, that you can potentially uh, get in front of them with. Try and tell the story of that one moment. Try and paint that picture of your customer in that moment in time. Really kind of understand your customer, understand like their age, gender, location, because you'll have all these different targeting options inside of AdWords. Try and be as, as specific as possible. Um, like whereabouts would they live? What sort of house would they be in? Would they be looking this stuff up at work or home? Would they be on a mobile? Would they be on the desktop? Um, and really think about what their pains and their and their um, their questions that in their mind would be. And if you can really tell that story from like an outside perspective, like so you're painting the picture, but also intern them internally inside of their mind. If they if you can really appreciate what's going through their mind, you'll be able to create a really good ad. Because then you can just choose one core idea for your video. Think about that one strategy or that one story you want to share. Script it, storyboard it, and shoot it. And so film the video. And then based on each moment that you have, choose your campaign and targeting. Now, I've, there's so many different types of campaigns you can build, but the one I'd recommend is using those in-stream ads, those videos that appear in front of other videos, uh, like pre-roll ads. And the targeting I'd recommend you use for, to begin with is placements. So you can get in front of customers in that way. And then, of course, you just want to make sure you create the perfect offer. Make sure you give something that's actually of value and use um, for the viewer. Um, so... Often I see a lot of people sell something that's completely unrelated to actually what people want and it never works. So put yourself in your user's shoes, so to speak. Start with the user. Think about exactly what they would want and create the offer that's kind of directly aligned to exactly what they want. And you can't go far wrong. And then basically what you do is you rinse and repeat for lots of different moments. 
uh, kind of go through other ideal customers, find out their trigger moments, find out the story of their one moment, and then go through these um, steps over and over again. So you're kind of creating lots and lots of different videos, um, ads for lots of different uh, moments, and you're tapping into your customers and making sure you're giving them an amazing experience each and every single time. Because once you build it, it's evergreen. It's not going away. It's the sort of thing where it's kind of like you can leave it there running for years to come. And um, some of my my success, most successful campaigns I've got with clients have been built more than 12, 18 months ago and continue to work today. Um, so once you build it and it works, you can rely on it. You know that advertising isn't going anywhere. It's not this like flash in the pan. It's the sort of thing that is there constantly. And um, advertising has always been around. It's not going away anytime soon. And um, so really these platforms can work incredibly well for you. And that's the exercise I'd recommend you go through to really build out YouTube ads for your business, especially when you're getting started. Okay, so if you enjoyed the video and you want to receive more videos just like this one, make sure you subscribe. You'll see the button on the video right now.